Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We are looking at how you can improve every day this week. I'm basing this off a really good podcast I heard by Dr. John C. Maxwell. Uh, been a mentor from a distant for me for many, many years. Um, back 20 years ago, I was honored to be in a book that he wrote called Felling Ford in chapter six. And the chapter I was fortunate to be in said, it's not what happens to me, it's what happens inside of me. And just things that I learned from going through a flood and a, a business that I had that did almost $10 million a year and had a, almost 100 people working with me and just things I learned that actually from John Maxwell, from books and attending one of his leadership conferences. Uh, he's a former pastor, a tremendous man of faith, and now in his 70s still making ripples uh, for Jesus and in leaders all over the world. But if you missed yesterday's podcast, I really encourage you to check it out or yesterday's program uh, we've got a youtube channel uh, we're on all the podcast platforms uh, hope that you'll check that out i think you'll really be blessed but yesterday we looked at one don't be afraid to admit you're wrong it proves that you are wiser today than you were yesterday we also talked about the importance of habits and that habits turn actions into attitudes and attitudes into lifestyles and then secondly, we looked at you will never change your life until you change something you do daily. It could be something as simple as, like I said, turning off the TV and not starting that first thing in the morning um, or the radio, just saying, you know what, I'm going to spend time with Jesus first thing. Or maybe it's starting to drink water at at least one meal a day instead of a soft drink or something else. A third thing that John Maxwell says, if you want to improve in your life uh, every day, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. Okay? Say it again. You cannot manage what you cannot measure. So, in other words, instead of saying that you're going to read more this year, say that you're going to read two chapters of a book every day. One of the things that I did was uh, reading uh, Proverbs, whatever the day of the week is. You heard me talk about that. 31 chapters in Proverbs, where the day of the week is, I would read a proverb. And I did that for one year straight. And I've done that off and on for many years. And it's amazing how God speaks to me. I'm trying to work on writing a book and um, getting some help and coaching there and, you know, trying to write 15 minutes a day. And I'm not to the point where I'm doing it every day yet, but at least I'm getting started. And it's it just it's exciting. I know eventually it'll get done, but instead of saying I want to write a book, I'm trying to have some more specific plans. So I uh, hope that helps somebody today listening. Another thing John Maxwell says that we should set realistic expectations for our improvement. What can you tackle in a day? You will have to tackle it tomorrow and the next day and so on. And friends, I've been guilty of that. You know, I mean, we try to, you know, plan too big. It's like exercising when instead of saying, all right, you know, I want to run a little 5K or something instead of start trying to run the whole thing the first day, maybe just do some fast walking and maybe do, you know, sprint or run for 30 seconds, but then walking mainly it and keeping yourself from getting injured and just slowly working into it. But if we try to go for the whole goal the first day, the first week, then we can get discouraged and we want to quit. I like this next thing by Dr. John C. Maxwell. He says, continual change is essential for continual improvement. They go together. The things that got you there are seldom the things that keep you there. And, you know, friends, I, I mean, I don't like that, to be honest. I like to get comfortable in things that I'm comfortable with. And yet, that's one of the things I realized that, change is just a part of life i mean i think back to music when i grew up and i got done working at the grocery store and i got a paycheck each week from food town supermarkets and it's a 16 year old and i, I would buy uh, an album and then of course it went to cassettes and then it went to cds <laughs> of course now people are are streaming <laughs> uh, you know it's just a life change music's still available but it's just not the same way and so we have to either change or we die. Now, that doesn't mean we change the gospel. We don't change John 3, 16. I mean, that's still God's word is still true. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So we don't change the message, 
but we may need to change the methods. And we have to do that sometimes in church, but we also have to do it in our own life. We talked about this a, a little bit more on Monday's program, but, you know, motivation gets you started. Habits keep you going. Mm, that's so good. Motivation gets you started, but habits keep you going. And I want to encourage you to maybe go back and listen to yesterday's program if you missed it. And we just talk about some ways to start habits and uh, don't over try to promise and things, but you got to measure it and start out small. Remember the, uh, the old saying, the old story of the tortoise and the hare, and that obviously the hare tore off, the rabbit, you know, took off, but turtle just kept plodding along, and eventually he won the race, and I'm, I'm learning to do that as I get older and hopefully more mature, right? Another thing John Maxwell says, we can overestimate what we can do in a month, and underestimate what we can do in a year. We are infatuated with big and fast. Well, that basically just kind of summarizes what I just shared there with you with the tortoise and the hare. And yet, friends, it is. And it's just like, you know, if you want to save money, just saying, hey, you know, maybe it's $10 a week, $20 a week. And, you know, maybe it's you're like, I'm going to take my lunch to work at least three days a week and um, just saving that money and it's amazing friends just a little bit at a time it adds up when we do things like that or maybe it's with exercise and just saying on my 15 minute break at work if the weather's too cold uh, see if you can walk around your office complex um, or parking away far when you go to the grocery store or have to go uh, do some shopping at uh, some store and parking instead of close by walking parking in the back of the parking lot walking extra and one of the things i've done before is uh i've walked there's a meyer department store supermarket and you know they have everything uh, admired and uh i've got over to one side of the store where they sell their non-food items it's not as a busy area and in winters i've gone and walked there for uh 30 or 45 minutes and so there's different ways, for instance, we can do these things, uh, but it's encouraging. I'm just trying to get you to get started. And I want to encourage you with your Bible reading, too. One of the great things I would do uh, when I was walking there, I would listen to podcasts, and things that help me grow spiritually and uh, things that help me grow mentally. And God, God wants to help you do that, friends, and that's the great thing when you can multitask. And I know they say men can't multitask, but, hey, I'm able to walk and listen with my earbuds in my ears, and uh, it, was, it was really great. felt really productive. I got some exercise in, and I also uh, I, I grew intellectually. and My mental aspects and my spiritual life were definitely better. Focus is so key, though. Uh, William James, a nodal psychologist, said, if you would be rich, you will be rich. If you would be good, you will be good. If you would be learned, you will be learned. But wish for one thing exclusively and don't at the same time wish for a hundred incompatible things just as strongly. In other words, focus. I heard this guy say this day one time, my goal was to retire when I reached 40. I've been partly successful. I reached the age of 40. You know, friends, I've been there a lot of times with goals I've set. I may have not gotten all of it, but you know what? I got a lot more than I would have if I didn't set the goal. And I love doing that, friends, and trying to look at ways that uh, we can grow and uh, stretch yourself. And the reason I like to do that, set goals, uh, some people like to call them BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. And the thing I like about that when you do that is, you do what you feel like you can do if you're really disciplined and focused, but you also maybe add another 15, 20% to that and say, you know, this could happen with God's help. If I ask God to help me, if I have a plan and I'm disciplined, maybe I might even be able to do a little bit more. So I'm going to put this about maybe 15, 20% at most more than uh, I could do with a great effort and just let God do what only God can do. And it's okay, friends, to have a have a goal and a plan. And, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs, without vision, the people shall perish. So I want to encourage you uh, to, it's okay to plan and ask God to help bless those plans. But understand, you know, we have to go back and make modifications at time, too. And that's okay. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, even though I know we're almost to March. 
Um, a lot of people have set New Year's goals, resolutions, whatever you want to call them. But, you know, sometimes life happens and you have to go back and reevaluate. Sometimes it's, well, I wasn't as disciplined as I should have. But then sometimes major life events happen like a physical injury or a family member that has an illness that you have to help out or your job situation changes. I mean, life happens, but it's okay to go back and modify those goals, but to be focused on what you have and just to keep going, not to give up, not to quit. Another thing that's so important that John Maxwell says is spend 80% of your time working on your strengths or skills. He, he talks about, and this is for people in business and things, but people don't pay for average. Stay where your gifts and abilities are. And this usually is a skill that you have and something you enjoy. But two weak areas, Maxwell says, that will hurt you are lack of self-discipline and a bad attitude. And, you know, friends, that's one of the things that I've had to learn is that, you know, sometimes we don't realize that we can get into having what uh, is called stinking thinking. <laughs> you know, we start getting negative and critical, and, you know, there's always going to be obstacle, friends. Jesus told us, in this world, you will have trouble. You will have trials and tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And in me, you will have peace, Jesus said. And so having that kind of attitude and yet having the self-discipline to make sure you're doing the things that you know God's called you to do, the dreams that he has put in your heart. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and you shall have the desires of your heart. The challenge, though, friends, is that a lot of times we don't delight ourselves in the Lord. We just tell the Lord what the desires of our heart are. And I've learned sometimes my desires are not his desires. But when, when I delight myself in him and ask the Holy Spirit to guide and direct my steps, it's amazing how my desires can become God's desires. And maybe that's why your so-called goals or resolutions that you set for yourself this year to grow and improve an area, maybe that's why they're, they're not happening. And so I want to encourage you today, maybe just take some time and pray and ask God, are these goals and desires that I have, are they ones that line up with your desire for my one and only life? And so just remember, friends, it's important to have a plan, but then you've got to have self-discipline and have a good attitude. Or if you don't, the lack of self-discipline and the bad attitude will literally sabotage you and you'll never uh, feel like you're improving. And the end of this year will show up and you'll just think, you know what, I'm in the same old, same old. And yet, friends, I believe that God wants to help us not stay in those ruts. It wants us to help us move forward. And I guess the final thing I want to ask you today as we wrap up this program is what you're doing today going to get you closer to your goal tomorrow? I'll ask you that one more time. Is what you're doing today going to get you closer to your goal tomorrow? So, friends, I know this has been a little different these two days, but I just felt like I wanted to share this podcast by John Maxwell, How Do You Improve Every Day? Really, really blessed me, caused me to kind of reevaluate some things as we get ready to start the month of March. I want to encourage you maybe to set some spiritual goals, uh, relational goals, some uh, financial goals, family, you know, social goals, um, God created all those areas, all those boxes, friends, but he wants you to invite him to be a part of them. You've been blessed by this program. I hope you'll share it with somebody else. We're out of time. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here. <laughs>